so it's 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 now 7 p.m. in in, in Finland, 8 uh, 6 6 p.m. in Central Europe. So uh, good evening, everyone, or good afternoon, or good morning. Um, we will start our our uh, our uh, focus group webinar. So welcome all to this webinar uh, organized by the uh, CRS focus group nanomedicine and nanoscale delivery. And uh, uh, today um, it's our great pleasure to start this autumn um, webinars of our of our uh, focus group with uh, um, uh, um, Dr. Um, Emre Turelli from Mayo uh, Biotech. And uh, um, Dr. Turelli is actually the, the CSO of uh, uh, My Biotech. He holds a PhD degree in pharmaceutical technology from Johannes Gothenburg University in, in Mainz, Germany. He's also international recognized scientist and he has uh, 15 years of international research and development experience. Um, as well as um, executive uh, management e experience in pharmaceutical industry. Uh, he was uh, the CEO and co-founder um, of uh, the former MJR uh, Farmjet. Um, and he has had several management positions in different pharmaceutical companies. And his expertise goes from drug delivery systems to nanoparticle uh, development and production uh, methodology development uh, in pharmaceutical industry environment with, uh, of course, with a very uh, strong focus on uh, GMP uh, compliance. Um, and therefore, this is extremely interesting to this, this uh, audience uh, to also hear uh, from, a from an industrial point of view what's going on there for, for in this case, to predict the solution of nanoparticle formulations. Um, so before I just give the word to, to Dr. Torelli, I just want to, to tell to the audience, so um, um, you can then at the end of the presentation post your questions in our chat or just raise your hand and, uh, um, and, and ask the, the, the mic to, 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 to make the, the, the questions yourself. So, so feel free to do, to do so. Uh, but let's let's wait till the end of the presentation. So we know, without any further ado, I, I I would like to again to to thank Dr. Torelli for accepting our invitation to present here, and we very much uh, look forward to, uh, to to your talk on on this important subject uh, that is the the the, pr uh, the prediction of the dissolution of different uh, nanoparticle uh, formulations. So uh, the screen is all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Helda, for the nice introduction. Hi, everybody. I'm Emre Trilli. I am from MyBiotech. I am the CSO of MyBiotech. In MyBiotech, we are working on formulation development, especially for nanoparticle and mi microparticle formulations, and which also basically includes uh, the methods for the characterization of such formulations since, since we need these methods all the time in order to be able to select our lead formulation in order to be able to differentiate between the formulations. And today I will present you one of our latest uh, advancement and dissolution of nanoparticle formulations. The idea behind was that we developed the uh, equipment together with Agilent for the dissolution of nanoparticle formulation to overcome all the issues regarding the uh, dissolution of nanoparticle formulations to be able to understand at the end of the day our nanoparticle formulations. So as you know basically everybody is working with the nanoparticle formulations they are for a quite while now in focus of pharmaceutical development especially for low soluble substances to increase the bioavailability of the API. What is the method that I have to be able to assess if there, is, there will be an increase in bioavailability or how the bioavailability at all be is it the solution what I can test before I start with animal experiments or with clinical trials. That is, that is the dissolution that I need to be able to assess my formulations. What happens 
in the dissolution of nanoparticles. Obviously, decrease in the particle size results in increase in dissolution based on noise Whitney equation uh, as, uh, as described years ago. So if you have smaller particles, they do dissolve faster. And there's also one add-on. The higher solubility is, comes with the higher dissolution due to the local supersaturation of the nanoparticle formation. So they reach shortly to the supersaturation, which is actually higher than the solubility of the API in the, in the uh, medium. And result, as a result, we will have then higher bioavailability in oral formulation. So what we have seen over the years is selection of the right methodology is very, very crucial for the drug development, but of course, afterwards for the quality control of nanoparticle formulation. Once you are done with the development, you are done with your technology transfer, you bring your nanoparticles off the mar uh, market, you will need to make sure that you have a quality control method, a dissolution quality control method for your nanoparticle formulation, which can differentiate between let's say bad formulations and good formulations. For that, the first criteria, the very important criteria is the separation of nanoparticles from the dissolution medium. Why? Because when you do your dissolution, you take your sample and if you cannot separate the nanoparticles from your dissolution sample, they all go into the HPLC analysis together and they the nanoparticles dissolve in the HPLC column, and at the end, you have a higher dissolution profile as the real profile. Another important point is, why do we make nanoparticles? Because they have a higher dissolution rate, which means they do dissolve quickly. So I need also a quick separation method, especially for the immediate release nanoparticles. The reason is for that is quite uh, clear if I have a sampling procedure that takes 45 minutes because I need to separate the nanoparticles from the dissolution medium using ultra centrifugation, and but take the sample after three minutes, the, the results that I'm reading at the end of the day is not the three minutes uh, dissolution result, it is the 45 minute dissolution result. So we need to make sure of these two points, which, in uh, my opinion, the conventional techniques that have been used until now are not ready or are not sufficient enough uh, to, to be able to um, supply these two important points for the dissolution of nanoparticles. We have seen in the previous studies with nanoparticles and dissolution, the non-sync condition is very important to increase the discriminative property of the solution method. Normally, in a conventional dissolution, you do the dissolution under same conditions, which means uh, solubility at solubilities or at volumes higher than the solubility of the API. But in case of uh, nanoparticles, in this advantageous conditions, if you put nanoparticles under same conditions, due to the fact that they all dissolve very fast, they dissolve and you don't see any differences between different formulations. So that we also use non-sync conditions for the uh, characterization of nanoparticles in order to be able to understand what the issue is coming from, from uh, this non-sync condition. First, we need to understand what happens to, the uh, to nanoparticles when I put them under non-sync condition. So I take the nanoparticles, I put it in a dissolution uh, medium under non-sync conditions. It can be two possible uh, things that can happen. Some of nanoparticles will be dissolved in the solution medium, and some of nanoparticles will be only dispersed in the solution medium. And according to the definition of a dissolution study, the nanoparticles only dissolved in the solution medium has an effect on bioavailability, which means that I need to separate the nanoparticles uh, dispersed in the solution medium from the medium which contains the salt API. Just to give you an example, um, how it normally would look like if you use the syringe filters, which is mostly used for the dissolution, uh, dissolution studies, for the conventional dissolution studies. So if you have microparticular API, which is not dissolved in the dissolution medium, you take your sample, you filtrate it through a syringe filter, and on the other side of the syringe filter in the filtrate, you have 
clear solution without any microparticles. The issue with the nanoparticles is they go through these filters. Until let's say from one micrometer down to 0 0.2 micrometers, you don't have any chances that these nanoparticles will be filtered or most of the nanoparticles will not be filtered. They will just go through, through the filter and you have nanoparticles in your sample. If you go below 0 0.2, there are filters, for example, 0 0.1 micrometer or 0 0.02 micrometer, which is in theoretically is able to filtrate the nanoparticles. But depending on the concentration of nanoparticles in your dissolution media, it might be that you will get filter blockage and at the end of the day, filter rupture due to the nanoparticles. So we started uh, looking for alternatives. On the right side, you see a dissolution graph from the same formulation, from the same vessel volume. Once we take the sample at the same uh, sampling point and filtrate it through different uh, filters. The green one is 0 0.45 micrometer filter. As you can see, it reaches quite quickly within 30 minutes up to 100% which shows us that all nanoparticles are going through the uh, one micro, uh, 0.45 micrometer filter. We have the blue one, 0.2 micrometer filter, where you can see I can get rid of some of the particles, but they are still there. We have 0 0.1 micro filter, uh, micrometer filter, where you uh, see a decrease in the nanoparticle dissolution, but especially in this case, I want you to look at the 60 minute value, which is going unexplainably high. That is basically a sign that you have a filter rupture and the nanoparticle starts passing through the filter. And if, you, if I go down to 0 0.02 micrometer, it was almost not possible to filter the complete sample due to the blockage of the filter, which is seen, um, which is observed by the high relative standard deviation. But here I can understand that the solubility of the nanoparticles in this dissolution medium compared to the dose is around 30%. And depending on the filter type that I'm using for my dissolution studies, I can find anything between 100% to 30%. There was a reason why we started thinking about the new equipment, which would help us to do the continuous and efficient separation of nanoparticles from the solution medium. We need also maximum particle separation efficiency, even for very small particles, because we also work with uh, non-organic particles like gold nanoparticles, iron nanoparticles, which are sometimes even below 10 nanometers. We need to be also sure that these small particles are separated from the dissolution media using the new system. And at the end of the day, we want to reach predictive in vitro dissolution testing for nanoparticles. This is the reason why we developed this system. It's called Nanodisk together with Agilent. It has three different parts. The first part is a conventional USB 2 dissolution apparatus. We don't want to really change anything there because it is an accepted apparatus which are widely used for R&D for quality control purposes. Also, it is already in the pharm uh, pharmacopoeia. It is also accepted by the authorities. Our idea was what happens after we take the sample from this uh, apparatus too, how we can separate the nanoparticles from the sample in a very quick way. For that, we decided to use cross flow filtration uh, modules. The good thing about cross flow filtration modules are they, are, they, they come with different uh, particles, uh, different membrane pore sizes, so that I can adjust them also according to fine nanoparticles. What happens is basically the sample is taken from the dissolution vessel with a pump. It goes to the cross flow filtration module. The medium without particles are filtered out of the cross flow filtration module, which is taken through another, another pump into the uh, sample collector. And the dissolution medium, which was in the filter module, is directed back into the dissolution vessel so that we are also not using any, losing any dissolution medium. Just a couple of information about the uh, cross flow filtration. Um, that is a technique that we have been using for quite a long time, but basically for manufacturing and for the purification or solvent removal. What we have done with these cross flow filtrations are, for example, when you prepare nanoparticles with a precipitation, 
you always have an organic solvent in the nanoparticles and you can use this organic solvent from the nanoparticle dispersion using phosphor filtration down to the ppm level um, that is the reason that we knew that these filters are able to separate the nanoparticles from from any kind of medium it can be the solution medium but it can be just the medium that the nanoparticles are dispersed so that we basically modified these uh, filters for the use in the dissolution test another good thing is there is a tangential flow filtration which means the flow is tangential to the filter so it is not going against the filter like in the dead earth filtration because if it goes against the filter the nanoparticles gets into the pores of the filters block them and then you have a problem so and since it doesn't go against the filter you don't have also any filter cake and you don't have any blockage of the filters you can use the same filter for several dissolution studies after we put together or Agilon put together the uh, nanopart uh, nanodes we did some tests using the nanodes to see for example if we have an efficient filtration if we can separate all the particles for that we have prepared plj lumogen red nanoparticles um, these particles does not dissolve in uh, in buffer at least in a short time where we did the test these are extended release particles so it will take longer time until they can they can dissolve in the buffer and limogen red is covalently bound on the particles so that it's not releasing from the particles another good thing about these particles are is um, you can really see by vis visual inspection if the nanoparticle filtration is efficient or not because the color of these particles are pink and if you don't have any particles in the medium it is transparent it's colorless if you have nanoparticles in the medium you will see a pink color what we did is we did three different filtration with these particles through 0.45 micrometer syringe filter 0.22 micrometer syringe filter and we use our none of this system just a couple of information about the method we use about the particles on the left side you see the method we use the dissolution uh, apparatus phi uh, 2 with the 50 uh, rotation uh, speed at a temperature of 37 degrees and we compared the unfiltered medium 45 micrometer filtered medium, 0 0.22 micrometer filtered medium, and the nanodes. We take samples uh, for 30 minutes every five minutes, and we use as a dissolution medium uh, phosphate buffer at pH 7.4. On the right side, you can see the particles. Uh, the particle size was around 123 nanometers with a very uh, small PDI value of 0 0.051, which shows the homogeneity of particles. That was important for our test because we want to really see if we can separate all the particles up to 200 nanometers. And as you can see in the graph, the particle size distribution at, uh, at uh, 200, uh, uh, 200 nanometers and we had the zeta potential of minus 36.7 millivolt, which basically, which basically ensures the uh, dispersibility of nanoparticles in the dissolution medium. As of course, another opportunity or an, another possibility what can happen when you put your nanoparticles in the dissolution medium, if the nanoparticles are not stable enough, or if you choose the wrong dissolution medium for, for your nanoparticles, it might happen that the nanoparticles directly agglomerate in the dissolution medium which on one case makes it easier to filter, but in, in such a case, since you change the particle size and the physical properties of the nanoparticles, you won't be able to really come up with a result which would then have a, a in vivo uh, correlation or uh, would tell you really a lot about your formulation. On the left side, you can see the results of the uh, dissolution the study. There is Definitely no difference between the unfiltered and filtered through 0 0.45 micrometer uh, filter, which was as expected since the highest particle population that was present in the sample was 200 nanometers. So that every particle goes through the 0 0.45 micrometer filter 
and you don't see any differences. If you try to filtrate with 0.2 micrometer filtered, there is a very slight decrease in the dissolution, which is uh, due to the fact that there was a very small part of the nanoparticles which were slightly higher than 0.2 micrometers so that these are filtered out of the medium, but all, every other particle goes through the medium. But we, when we try it with the nano disk, we have seen that we don't have any particles in the dissolution medium, which shows us that we have a complete filtration of the nanoparticles from the dissolution medium using nano disk. On the right side in the picture, you can see um, the pink one is the original solution, and the other ones are uh, from from six uh, six vessels. Uh, the samples at 15 minutes that I taken with none of this and as you can see there is no color in these samples and we have done some studies on the solution of immediate release nanoparticles especially in this case the dissolution method is very important because immediate release tablets or immediate release formulations they do dissolve within 15 30 or maximum 45 minutes and when you do the same thing with nanoparticles it happens even quicker so you need a very efficient method in order to be separate nanoparticles very quickly so that the dissolution process stops and you would be able to determine your real dissolution curve. For that, we prepared ibuprofen nanoparticles. Um, for the dissolution medium, we looked for a medium first that our nanoparticles are 100% dispersible. So there's no change in particle size. There is no agglomeration in the, in the medium. And we were looking for a medium where the API is only limitedly soluble so that we can see the differences between different nanoparticle formulations. And the medium we found at the end was pH 4.5 acetate buffer, which we didn't have any particle agglomeration. We had on only uh, limited solubility in the medium because the solubility of ibuprofen is uh, pH dependent, which means once the pH is increased, the solubility increases. If you do the same study at 7.2, pH 7.2, you will directly get 100% dissolution. But if you do it at pH 4.5, you get only a limited dissolution of nanoparticles or also of the API. And the result we were looking for was that we want to only determine the dissolution of API, but not the dissolution of dispersed nanoparticles. Again, our method, USB2, 50 uh, rotations per minute, 37 degrees. We have used four different filters, 0 0.4 to 5 micrometer, 0 0.22 micrometer, 0 0.02 micrometer, and the nano disk, whereas I have to say, it was really hard to get the the solution medium through a 0 0.02 micrometer filter because we tested the ibuprofen in the, uh, for the solution in the real doses, which means 200 milligrams in 900 milliliter the solution media. And at the end, that is also together with the other excipients that we use for the tablet formulation. It is a high concentration of nanoparticles in the, the solution medium and it directly blocks the smaller filters. We have done the dissolution for 90 minutes. And as I, as I told before, we have used the acetate buffer pH 4.5. On the right side, you, you can see the particles that we prepared for that. The particles were around 225 nanometers, again, with a low PDI of 0 0.086, which shows, again, the homogeneity of the particles. So when we take 200 milligram ibuprofen nanoparticles, put them into 900 milliliter pH 4.5 acetate buffer, two things can happen. In the first place, the complete nanoparticles are dispersed in the medium. Then approximately 60% stays as dispersed in the dissolution medium, 40% dissolved in the dissolution medium. That is the difference that I want to quantify in a dissolution method to be able to say if the nanoparticles are dispersed salt or is it happening at the same time so what we would see is if i have a filtration method which cannot separate the dispersed nanoparticle which means in my in my sample which i want to analyze i have dissolved 
ibuprofen and nanoparticle ibuprofen. Then you put it into the HPLC. It is injected into a column. And then you have your mobile phase, for example, acetonitrile uh, in your HPLC, which dissolve the undissolved nanoparticles in the sample you injected into the column. And at the end, you have a 100% solution profile. But if the separation of the nanoparticles is successful, we should only see 40% dissolution of these nanoparticles. On the left side, you can see our uh, dissolution result. When we use 0 0.45 micrometer filter after we take the samples, we ended up seeing 100% dissolution within 10 minutes which is not surprising because all the particles are smaller than 45 nano, uh, 450 nanometers. So that all go through the uh, filter and at the end will be analyzed together with the HPLC. When I use 0 0.2 micrometer filter, we adjusted the particle size uh, of these nanoparticles in a way that we have approximately the average particle size of 200 micro, uh, nanometers so that I can filtrate some of the particles but some of the particles are still in the dissolution medium. So that, that is why I see a higher dissolution profile. When I try to filtrate them through 0 0.02 micrometer filter, that is the green line. What we have seen is, first of all, it was not really possible to get a filtrate more than a couple of hundred microliters because the filters were directly blocked. And as you see in the dissolution curve, the dissolution curve is going up and down and has a huge standard deviation, which basically tells us that the filtration method is not working at all. When I do the same thing with none of this, I can see a dissolution profile, which then really tells me the dissolution pro uh, profile of the nanoparticles, but not the dissolution uh, dispersibility profile of the nanoparticles, which was only possible with the nanodis equipment. Then uh, we have done a dissolution comparison using this method where we basically prepare three different nanoparticles and the idea was we wanted to see the differences between three, these three different uh, nanoparticles. On the left side you can see we have nanoformulation one, two and three. Three has the highest dissolution profile and one has the lowest dissolution profile with the green curve. The reason for that is the blue one has the smallest particle size, the green one has the biggest particle size. So we could see the expected results that we can change the dissolution profile of a nanoparticle formulation using, using only the differences in the particle size. But if I do the same dissolution study using a 0 0.2 micrometer filter, since I also get the dispersed particles with, uh, within my uh, sample, you will see that there's no differences in the solution profiles between these three formulations on the right side. So why I show you uh, this one, so during your method development, you need a method that would allow you to discriminate between different nanoformulations. If you use the conventional filtration through 0 0.2 micrometer filter, you don't see any differences in the solution of these three formulations, they're, they're all the same. But if you use none of this, if you can really separate the nanoparticles from the dissolution media, this is, uh, that is then when you start seeing the differences between the nanoparticle formulation. And that is what you want to also see to be able to say, okay, I go further with the nanoformulation tree that has, has the highest dissolution uh, rate, and then uh, I will develop a tablet formulation from that. We have also worked on uh, the solution of extended release nanoparticles. It's also an important uh, thing, especially for the new formulations, this PLGA, PLA, parenteral formulations, which is required to release in body uh, at least one month or maybe even longer. So these nanoparticles also needs to be quantified or the, the solution of these nanoparticles needs also be quantified. For that, we have used rhodamine PLGA nanoparticles we have used two methods. The first one was dialysis bag, and the second one was, again, the nanodisc. And then at the end, we have done a quantification of rhodamine with HPLC. On the left side, again, our dissolution method, we have used the USB 250 
rotations per minute, 37 degrees, either we put the formulation in the dialysis membrane um, and then put it into the vessel or we introduce directly the formulation into the vessel and use the non disposable filtration. We have done the dissolution for four hours in water. On the right side, these are the particles that we use for this dissolution uh, study with around 80 nanometers particle size. So when we look at the results, what we see is the orange one is the dialysis membrane, which means in the dialysis membrane, you have different processes. First of all, in the dialysis membrane, the nanoparticle needs to dissolve. But since it's a very small volume, it reaches to a saturation in the dialysis membrane. At the same time, some precipitates again because you reach the saturation, some will be then dissolved again, and this is an ongoing process. On the other hand, you have the permeation process, which means the dissolved substance needs to permeate through the dialysis membrane into the dissolution vessel where you can really quantify the API. But the, that is basically the rate limit, uh, limiting step here. Why? The reason for that is you have this permeation uh, coefficient, which is controlling the permeation of the API. So you are measuring only the permeation of the API or the permeation rate of the API going from the dialysis membrane to outside of the dialysis membrane. The dissolution, the real dissolution happens within the membrane, which is then basically controlled by uh, other, other uh, um, things like saturation of the API in the dialysis membrane, precipitation of the API in the uh, uh, dialysis membrane, and so on. So that you see a very slow dissolution. On the other hand, when we use none of this, we can directly quantify the release API. That is the reason why we have a higher dissolution profile in this case, different from the immediate release profile. <laughs> but this is more close to the real dissolution profile of the nanoparticle. So this is my last slide, just to summarize what uh, we have reached with uh, none of this. So with none of this, we have a method which is able to separate nanoparticles from the dissolution medium, independent of particle size, since you can choose different cross flow filters that are Crossflow filters starting with one kilodalton up to thousand kilodaltons, which would then give you the flexibility to choose the right crossflow filter according to your need. The particle separation is online and simultaneous. In case of none of this, it is a very quick separation method, so that you can even use it for a very quick uh, with with nanoparticles with a high dissolution rate. We have at the end, when we look at the results, predictive dissolution of nanoparticles, which is then made actually possible with the quantification of only the salt API. And this nano, this system can be used for immediate, but also for extended release formulations. I would like to thank you for your attention and for listening to me. And if you have any questions, would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the discussion of the case, and particularly on this uh, on this um, uh, development uh, for the, um, the analysis of the dissolution uh, of, of nanoparticle formulations, which is indeed very important. So, so uh, virtual applause for for the very excellent um, um, and uh, showing the the importance of this uh, um, solution testing and using. Right methodology for the solution testing. Um, so I think we have uh, actually a lot of time for, for discussion. Um, so I would uh, um, open the, um, the presentation for discussion from the audience. Uh, so you feel free to, um, to add your questions directly to the chat um, or, or then just, uh, just uh, raise the, the, the hand or ask me to use the mic. Hi, Helder. This is uh, João. Please, João, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much for 
uh, this very nice talk. Uh, uh, thank you, Elder, for the organization and uh, you know the focus group for organization of such a relevant webinar. Um, I have a few questions, if I may. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yes, please go yes, ahead. Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, so basically you have, you know, uh, a USB dissolution apparatus coupled to a TFF device that then reads, then you sample, you, you get the sample, you, you quantify the, the drive, you know, by anyway, HPLC or whatever. This is correct, right? This is correct, yes. Okay. So um, my question, my first question is, have you, I mean, TFF, depending on the conditions, can be fairly, uh, I would say, aggressive. Uh, I'm wondering whether you have, uh, regardless the nature of the nanoparticles, either uh, immediate release or, you know, long-term release, uh, have you controlled the size of the nanoparticles during the, the experiment, you know, to see whether the TFF itself could actually somehow change the size of the nanoparticles during the, the experiment? What we have uh, done is we, uh, we made nanoparticle size measurements before and after sampling. Okay. Um, there are two unknowns here. The first one is we don't know how the nanoparticles dissolve. If, you know, the nanoparticle is a population, it might be that the smaller population dissolves first, which is followed by the bigger po po uh, population, or they, it might also be the case that they all do dissolve together at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the second, uh, second uh, part is, um, the amount of volume that is sent through the uh, TFF is not the complete vessel. So we don't circulate the complete 900 milliliters. The circulation we normally do around 30 seconds, let me say, with a flow rate around 100 milliliters to 150 milliliters per minute. So we are talking about 50 to 75 milliliters. Uh, of the volume which was present in this vessel going through the particles, uh, going through the cross flow filtration membranes and going back to the vessel. What we tried is, uh, we, we tried to take the sample directly by the, uh, at the end of the cross flow filtration and then quantify for particle size and compare it to the particle size of the nanoparticles in the, in the vessel before the filtration they were very similar. There were okay. some differences, but I guess these differences is either coming from the measurement method or from the fact that the nanoparticles, the population of nanoparticles dissolve differently. The average particle size was still the same, but the mm -hmm. peak was slightly shifted to right, let me say. Yeah, so uh, have, you, have you tested this uh, method you know, with particles of different nature, including poly polymer-based particles or lipid-based particles. Mm -hmm. We have, have you tested, tested with PLJ nanoparticles. We have tested with solid lipid nanoparticles, crystalline nanoparticles, inorganic nanoparticles. Um, yeah, that would be, I guess, okay. all. Okay, uh, Elder, can I ask a, I'll say the, a last question? Sure, 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 go ahead, yes. Okay, Please. so in, the, in this last, uh, I mean, in this last set of experiments, you, you've compared your system with the dialysis, okay? And you, you right. in, I mean, in my opinion, you, you pointed out some limitations of the dialysis. Uh, my question is, under these conditions, for these long-term release uh, nanoparticles, have you tested the reverse of dialysis to see whether how, how does it compare with your system? Because I mean, I think the reverse dialysis would somehow overcome of some of the limitations you, you pointed out. It, definitely, you're right. It does come some of the uh, limitations that I pointed out, especially about the solubility, uh, oversaturation, and so on. But there is still the permeation effect. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you, for the extended release nanoparticles, you can you have at least a method that you can separate the nanoparticles from the 
the solution media, either with dialysis or with reverse dialysis, which you bring basically another uh, factor into the game, which is the permeability. Is also yes. an interesting factor for you, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, for the for the uh, establishment of IV IVC. So according to my opinion, especially in the case of reverse dialysis, you can use both methods, mm -hmm. uh, the the none of this, but also the reverse dialysis, depending on in which parameter you're interested. Are you interested in the combination of uh, the solution together with permeation? Or are you interested at this stage only about how quick does the API get out of my particles, yeah. for example, for the formulation optimization? Yeah. I see. Uh, uh, has, has this system been uh, validated by a regulatory authority already? Not yet. The, we now completed the tests of the system. Uh, Agilent is doing the uh, extensive validation at the moment and the idea is to bring the system first uh, to the market uh, beginning of next year okay thank you thank you so this yes, is yeah well. the, the, you uh, Jordan already uh, already um, asked a few questions that I had so this this is still uh, an in-house uh, kind of uh, method right 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 that yeah. is the method that or the equipment we have developed at Agilent mm. at the moment only we do have it and obviously Agilent has it but yeah. the idea is to bring it to make it available uh, beginning of next year yeah very good very good I, I had also a, um, a, a curiosity uh, of question about the um, I in, in one of the, your slides you mentioned that uh, the, the nanodies was using um, a 300k uh, um, Dalton. Um, I guess it's it's the the, the separation. Um, uh, um, uh, so is is there a limit on how small the particles have to be, or is there a, a limit on um, um, uh, if if I have very very small size nanoparticles, is still your method uh, apply? Uh, um, Applicable, or because you in your in your examples you show uh, nanoparticles that were around, let's say, um, uh, one hundred and something, two hundred nanometers. How about if they are about, let's say, fifty nanometers, or even even smaller? Have you have you tested that small, and does it work exactly the same way? Mm -hmm. So basically, the, we have also worked with smaller nanoparticles, especially inorganic nanoparticles, mm -hmm. which are around 10, 15 nanometers. The good thing with these coarse flow filters are they do come in very different uh, pore sizes. Mm -hmm. There are uh, coarse flow filters, for example, with uh, one kilodalton yeah. pore size, which, of course, that is not a scientific calculation, but which also means that you can it goes down to 0 0.1 nanometers. Mm -hmm. So if you have, let's say, particles around, I don't know, five nanometers, you can, without any problem, do the, uh, the solution with NKDA uh, mem uh, membranes, approximately that is our uh, experience until now. And if you have even smaller uh, particles, you can mm -hmm. go to five KDA membrane yeah. or even one KDA membrane. but then at some point, you're, if, you, if you are working with a large molecule, at some point your molecule won't be able to also get out, out of the, out of the uh, filtration membrane. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so, this, this, so, uh, so you, think, uh, you think that uh, um, uh, the, the nanodes will have the option uh, that you have several of the four sizes, or, or is, it, is it comes with one and then you, you have to to probably change it or buy the, the other um, accessory or how, how, how do, you, do, you, do you see the, the Agilent will, will do this or do you, do you have an idea? Because I think uh, for many people working on the, with this nanoformulation, since the sizes are so broad in terms of uh, what kind of nanoparticles that they are using, probably, probably uh, uh, they would like to have different pore size inside so that they, they just yeah. switch very easily from one to the other. 
So as, uh, as far as I know, the agent will supply the complete system and these okay. filters that you see on the, uh, on the picture yeah. can be changed uh, and replaced by the user. So you can okay. as well buy the filters and then put new, new ones in it. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, any, any other questions from the audience? Uh, at least for our for our uh, uh, researchers and and uh, uh, this is actually quite important because in, in most cases we we do use the dialysis bag and or the and the synchronization uh, methods. Uh, I I don't know if you have done any kind of comparison with also with this synchronization method. Um, we were more using the immediate release formulations hmm. for the dialysis uh, for the nano disc. Uh, other than the very last example that I've sh sh shown you, hmm. so that we never actually use the sanctification method because it just takes too long time. Yeah. yeah. And it is it is just uh, yeah, from my point of view, not really applicable for the immediate release formulations. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Br Bruno. Bruno, uh, sorry, please go ahead. You have you raise your hand, please. Yes, um, Em, thank you very much for your presentation. Just a very short question. I don't know if you completely answered to João Nuno. Um, so is it possible to adapt the system to an online measurable system like uh, UV spectrometer or, or, or a similar one in order to have a, a completely closed circuit for the dissolution? Or so far you need to collect samples and measure them individually? I mean, uh, at the moment, uh, the way the system works is it automatically collects the sample to the right side in the sample collector and puts in either into these uh, tubes or it can directly put also in vial. But I'm quite sure, I mean, this online system is already there. There are online systems from also from Agilin that this mm -hmm. can be also connected to an online system. We haven't tried it in our lab yet. Uh, I don't know if uh, Agilent has ever tried that, but I would say theoretically it is possible. Good, good. Okay, mm. thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brun, as well. Any any other questions? Or curiosities? Of course, we are, we are all are wondering uh, uh, when it comes out and it, what it will be the price. But, but we will see them mm -hmm. later on. Later on, the, the implementation. But I was saying that in in our case, um, as, as also Bruno mentioned, uh, it would be great that if you have like in in line, so that you don't have to make the sampling uh, by 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 ourselves, uh, because that would facilitate the the. Um, um, the whole process and it's so time consuming when you have to do that and you know our students know that better than us because they do a lot of research, a lot of sampling to put in HPLC and so on so it would uh, save the, um, the time and also the probably the, the um, minimize the error when of the sampling and, and so on so it, it, uh, hopefully there, there will be a, a possibility to have this kind of uh, um, immediately in line that uh, the sample goes directly to the system and, and, and it can be analyzed. That's yeah, sure. I mean, it definitely makes sense. I will take this also as feedback hmm. uh, for, for, for Agilent so that uh, they think about that. But as you said, it makes definitely sense because once you separate the nanoparticles from the dissolution media, you don't also have any interferences exactly. for your UV measurement so that you can directly measure the dissolved API automatically. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Okay, so it's, uh, do we have more, more questions? Uh, audience, we have also some students, now it's a good opportunity also to ask from our experts uh, on the, uh, our expert on, on the dissolution of nanomaterials. Oh, but if not, then, uh, then let's, let's give again, uh, um, uh, um, uh, virtual applause to uh, uh, Dr. Pirelli and and uh, to take the time to to show us these these innovations and and we really look forward to uh, see this kind of implementation in in, in the market. Uh, 
uh, on the market so that uh, I, I'm sure that it will be very interesting for all the, the, the not, not only the companies developing an accumulation but also uh, research clubs like many many of us where we do constantly uh, um, um, release studies using different kind of nano, nano, uh, nano formulations. So thank you, thank you very much for the very clear and very uh, interesting presentation. And and thank you also the the audience and our, our members to be present here. So we will continue our 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 series of webinars uh, next month. You will you will you will for sure uh, receive more information about about those uh, quite soon. So thank you again, and uh, and take well. care, and and um, yeah, bye bye. Bye.